A remote aquatic wilderness hides an incredible array of amazing animals, where all creatures dance to the rhythm of water. Each year, epic floods drown the searing drought, forcing conditions so extreme. Survival is at risk, and winners become losers. Giant river otters risk their lives to protect their young, while caimans turn on their own kind. Night has a thousand eyes, and the thousand eyes belong to what may be the biggest concentration of caimans on Earth. Ten million of these scaly beasts inhabit the Pantanal, one of the world's greatest wetlands. They've survived another dry season to luxuriate in the coming rains. It's time for the males to show who's boss. From deep within their eight-foot frame come sound waves too low for human hearing. They impress females, alarm rivals. Two of the largest males face off. The winner will attract new mates, but it's a free for all. Caimans of both sexes swim together, rub their backs, and share touch. It's a reptilian orgy as both males and females enjoy multiple partners. Soon after mating, they will disperse, as the waters rewrite the map of the Pantanal in their favor. And a new generation will soon be on the way. Brazil's Pantanal is about to show why it deserves its title of the world's largest unaltered wetland. The flood-prone basin is 10 times the size of Florida's Everglades. Streams and rivers snake across its flat plain, sanctuary for thousands of species of exotic plants and animals. And now, it's about to undergo an amazing transformation. deluge begins. In the coming months, nearly five feet of water can fall. Rivers swell, their levels rise up to 16 feet, an area the size of Pennsylvania drowns. In its place, a vast labyrinth forms. Swamps, bank waters, and lakes all link together. In just two weeks, rains double the size of the lagoons the Caymans have fled to find prey elsewhere. Fields flood and fish spread out far and wide. More than 250 different species now swim where only days before land animals scurried. Their new freedom 
takes them out of easy reach of the predators and makes them harder to find. These are lean times for the giant river otters. The Pantanal is home to whole families of these rare creatures, the biggest otters in the world. The floods disperse their food. The muddiness of the water forces them to use their ears, their sense of smell and touch, as well as their eyes to find something to eat. This family must feed its young. Return to the precarious shelter, empty-handed and vulnerable to predators. Summer dens dug into the banks are flooded now. The departure of their prey is a serious blow to the family. Giant otters need to eat frequently to power their active lifestyle, up to 9 pounds of fish per day. Soon older, unattached members of the family may follow the fish spreading through the Pantanal Basin. That may be their chance to leave and start families of their own. The fish have fled for a reason. The mass exodus is an annual spectacle. Karimbas and Parapatangas are making their way upstream to reproduce. Like salmon, larger species will travel as far as 300 miles. Pacu and Dorado abandon the narrow confines of the riverbed to range more widely. The fields offer new hiding places, safe shallows and fresh grazing for many fish. Smaller rivers often come to an end in warm pools. Many fish settle in these dead ends to spawn. They scrape out a home in the riverbed. Some parents guard their young from other predatory fish. Catfish dig nests in the sand to hold their eggs. But the numerous species of piranha are looking out for any opportunity to eat the egg's rich protein. Catfish is injured. Now she risks a molly. She's outnumbered and can only abandon her eggs. The ferocious piranhas attack the sick, injured, and weak. Piranhas 
have eggs too. Now it's time for the thief to guard its own offspring. A few weeks here will produce a seething crop of new young piranhas. The wettest months in the Pantanal force a turning of the tides. Fortunes reverse. Even the most dangerous creatures must adapt or die. The anaconda's prey has spread wide in the floods. The giant snake must leave the water to search out something new to eat. If it finds a large animal, it may survive through the difficult months ahead. It smells something living. nest, carefully constructed above flood level, with nothing moving nearby. Worth investigating. But the risk, even to this super snake, is deadly. Cayman mothers are fiercely protective. There's no chance to ambush her unawares. The anaconda moves on to find an easier meal. The flood shows no sign of abating. The giant river otters are ranging far afield in search of food. Their dens are awash, and when suddenly one spots danger, they have nowhere to hide. They raise the alarm. A hungry jaguar could make a meal of an otter. The jaguar watches as its chances disappear. This time, they beat a hasty retreat. A long and tiring swim brings the otters to a lagoon. Sometimes they travel as far as 10 miles to find food. Trapped inside a blind alley, their prey can't escape. At last, the otters find something they can catch in their mouths. They corner fish in the shallows and scour the bottom to find more. The flood's fringes reach the ranges that bound the plains. Mountains edge the flat bowl of the Pantanal. Here, mountain fowls join the waters of the low lying basin.
below the surface, springs feed the streams. The fish thrive in the nutrient-rich pools. One species here is especially unusual, the Parapatanga. The Parapatangas practice a neat trick. They leap from swollen streams to pluck low-hanging branches. above flood level, safe in their nest, the caiman eggs are starting to hatch. If the leaves have kept them hot, they will be mainly males. If the nest is cooler, they will be mainly females. They make a sound to summon their mom. mother is very attached to them. She has guarded them for 10 weeks. She won't leave them now. She's not going to eat them, but help them as gently as she can. Her jaws can wrench off limbs, but now she eases the hatchlings out of their shell. She carries them to the nearest water one by one. She has almost 40 eggs, so this labor of love takes her all night. The first days of her offspring's lives are the worst. The tiny caimans are born hunters, but while they are small, plenty of animals want to eat them. Next morning, peccaries, the Pantanal's wild pigs, come down to the water to drink. They will eat almost anything. This mother won't let danger come near her babies if she can help it. She can keep her eye on those that stay close, but some slip away to explore. and the giant storks seize their chance. Curiosity kills the croc. Almost all young caimans die before their first birthday. That's why caimans have so many eggs. The 
Falling water level brings the anaconda back to the streams it prefers. It can hunt the hordes of fish as they return, or animals coming to the banks to drink. A good meal will last it for days, or even months, if the prey is sizable. Hidden air sacs by its lungs mean it can stay below the surface for 10 minutes at a time. It senses vibrations ahead on the stream bed. It hasn't eaten for weeks and will tackle a caiman if it gets a chance. The giant snake just needs to get close enough for an ambush. It hasn't given up yet. So many fish back in the rivers mean good times for those who depend on them for food, like otters and caimans. Any animal that relaxes its guard will pay with its life. Crocodilian versus giant constrictor is a battle that has raged for 60 million years. After four months, the flood is finally receding. There's a mass exodus from the distant pools. Fish begin to travel back to their home rivers and lagoons. Now, the branches are too high for the jumping fish to leap. Instead, they found an ingenious way to make the fruit come to them by following the monkeys. Capuchins are messy eaters. The Parapatanga track the troop to gobble up whatever they drop. But they must beware the prowling golden dorado. It will snap up a small fish if it can. And small fry must also watch out for another Asian predator, cut off from its ocean-bound relatives more than 20 million years ago, when the rivers ran west to the sea before the mountains rose. The Pantanal stingray has evolved on its own in fresh water, cut off from its seagoing relatives. Passers-by respect its deadly sting and leave it alone. A pair of Oscars know to keep a wary eye on their neighbors if they want their eggs to survive. Caution is especially worthwhile for a catfish if the neighbors are piranhas. Turn your back and they'll gang up on you. They prefer to eat other fish and don't mind which bits. If they are provoked or starving, they will turn on anything. 
They have voracious appetites. Their sharp triangular teeth interlock to shear off flesh. Their feeding frenzy can strip even large prey clean within minutes. The shrinking floodwaters concentrate the fish into narrower streams and pools. Once again, fortunes reverse. Now the masked prey turns birds into winners in the lottery of life in the Pantanal. They'll even hunt with the otters, driving the fish towards each other. The giant otters are enjoying winning streaks now too. Surprisingly, less water means more food. Fish are plentiful. The otters can find them more easily in the rivers than when their prey was scattered far and wide in the flood. The fast-moving hunters eat mainly fishes. They fish by day, and even when they are out and about, it's otter family etiquette to wait till everyone has finished eating before moving on. Once fed, the youngsters have energy to spare for play. The riverbanks reappear as the level drops. The parents can dig new dens for the family. A warren of connecting tunnels and chambers with several entries and exits. They need somewhere safe for the new babies they will soon have. The temperature's rising and they even enjoy some time out. Storks and caimans are coming back into their own. They also profit from huge numbers of returning fish born in the distant pools of the flood season. Murky conditions are ideal for ambush. Caimans can't chew, but they can bite and swallow. And they are determined not to let any lucky strike be the one that got away. The growing hours of sun recharge the Cayman's batteries. They bask on the shore to warm up. When they are too hot, they open their mouths to cool down. Meanwhile, leeches and bloodsuckers have a free ride and a drink in the shade of their jaws. The flood is a distant memory. Where fish swam only weeks before is now dry land. and anteaters browsing for termites.
This anaconda has just left the shrinking stream in search of better hunting grounds. It has to find safety before the sun shrivels it to snake skin. The giant snake's journey takes it where only a short time ago fish swam. Now it's the domain of the rayas and other land animals like the anteater. The anaconda would be happier to find animals it's used to meeting and eating. The anteater looks comical but has razor sharp claws. Like the snake, it has very poor eyesight and won't see a threat until it's very close. The snake can sense its presence through vibrations in the ground and notice any movement it makes. The anteater glimpses the snake when it's near. It avoids a mistaken confrontation that could endanger either of them. The snake continues its search for water or prey. The anteater is on its way to a meal of its own. A termite nest. It may not have teeth, but its sticky tongue can pull up thousands of termites in minutes. Almost five months after the flood, fish are confined to rapidly drying patches of land. There's no escape. Any that didn't return to the riverbeds are now trapped. will clean up the loser's remains. Only the widest watercourses survive. They give sanctuary to animals lucky enough to find them. The giant otters have set up home here. They have burrowed out several dens into which they can retreat. They hide their new cubs safely inside. They mark their presence to warn others off. Wood rails eat any fishy remains. The wide rivers still hold valuable stocks of fish. Otters will attack any other otter family that tries to poach their territory. After they have fed, the parents send the cubs to the river. They're only a few weeks old but it's time for a swimming lesson. The novices stay close to the bank for now. The parents are not the only ones keeping an eye on the cubs.
otter spot the would-be attacker. They let him know he's not welcome and warn the others. Parents quickly howl cubs back to safety. This time, the big cat has lost the advantage of surprise, but he may come back. Rather than risk the jaguar's return, the otter parents abandon this den. They'll carry their precious cubs away to a riverbank where they have another home. On the way, a baby loses its mother. It cries for help. It will be up to five months before it's weaned, but it will hunt for itself before a year is out. Otters continue to live with its family for at least a year and a half. For now, this one is just helpless. The heat continues to rise into the 90s. Caiman hunker down wherever they can find moisture. They prefer not to waste energy moving. To stay cool, they'd normally move to shade and deep water. Here, there's no shade and little water. They wrestle themselves into the thickest mud. As the heat grows, they risk overheating, fatally. Starvation makes an otter bold. He's after something to eat, dead or alive. Even a small caiman corpse will do. Suddenly, the hunter is hunted. Desperation drives animals to extreme acts. The once flooded plains extend their now arid expanses in every direction. Caimans and tortoises gamble with their lives as they set out on long overland treks in the anxious search for water. Caimans crowd the few oases. They guard them jealously. Few fish remain. But personal survival may outweigh the preservation of a future generation. Hunger is what motivates them now. And a hungry caiman may turn cannibal. Predators cannot afford to miss any opportunity. At one of their other dens, the giant otters are relaxing. They are playing with their young. From its vantage point, on the bank, the jaguar snoops on family life. It aims to catch them off guard.
This time, the otters go on the offensive. Locals call them water jaguars. They make a fearsome team, and their jaws and teeth are sharp enough to slice through thick fish bones. They're so aggressive, even the Pantanal's top predator would rather back off than take them on. Away from the remaining rivers, both the land itself as well as the Caymans are suffering. Conditions are so harsh, Caymans are forced to play their final trick. Go into suspended animation for up to five months. Heat and exhaustion silence the usually noisy capybaras. Any movement is an effort. The pitiless winter sun claims ever more victims. How long can this go on? Maggots and worms are the winners now. The earth fries in the heat. Dry foliage ignites in the sun. Wildfires break out. Just when all the creatures are on the edge, signs of hope rain down. A drenching is welcome. Rain, once again, irrigates the fields. It spawns births, blossoms, and quenches thirst. Ironically, the rising waters make losers of the otters. The banks soon overflow. Water floods their den. They shelter under trees once more. Their prey will scatter and they will soon be forced to move on. flood reopens aquatic highways into the Pantanal. 
its lifeblood refills the arteries that connect to its vast heart. Caymans return to congregate in numbers. Revitalized, they turn back to procreation. With renewed strength, they will soon spawn a new generation. Now the Pantanal bursts into life as the year begins again, forcing the fates of the entire wetland. sun and fierce blood transform secret Brazil's extraordinary water world. <laughs> 